Doba Palletizing Solution. This video will introduce installation tutorial for the palletizing solution. Open the wooden crate packaging. Use a forklift to position the workstation in the installation area. Note the distance between the front wheels of the forklift. Organize the items inside the package. Check all items. Install the left and right pallet stoppers on both sides of the palletizing base. Pay attention to the orientation of the grooves during installation. Thread the sensor connector through the wire hole. Tighten the screws of the pallet stoppers. Plug in the sensor connector. Then organize the wiring harness. Use a wrench to adjust the base cup of the workstation at the four corners. Level the workstation. After the base installation of the workstation is completed, install the CR28 cobot onto the mounting base of the bollard. Ensure correct installation orientation. The overload wire toward the side of emergency stop button. Secure the robot to the base using the six supplied 1025 screws. Simply plug the robot's overload wire into each other. Connect the pallet confirmation button box to the left-right ACK interface on the base respectively. Connect the conveyor photoelectric sensor. Check that the emergency stop button on the palletizing base has been released. Connect the power cord of the workstation. Turn on the workstation leakage protection. Turn on the air switch of the cobot control cabinet. Then press the power button. Wait for the indicator light to stay on steadily to complete the startup. Visit Dobot official website using a tablet or computer. Download the Dobot Studio Pro software. After downloading, proceed with the installation. After the software is installed, Connect the cobot to your device via Wi-Fi or Ethernet cable. Open Dobit Studio Pro, select the cobot you want to connect to. Check the software and controller versions. They should be maintained at 451.0 PAL or above. Enable button to ON. Click on the top right corner jog button to open the menu. Adjust the cobot to a stretch posture. Facilitate the subsequent installation of the cable harness and suction cup of end effector. Install the four cable harness clamps onto the coba. Organize the cables and fasten them through the bracket. Fix the flange to the end effector of the cobot through 6 MA12 screws. Install the suction cup O of the end effector using 4 MA12 screws. Adjust the lengths of the cables according to actual usage. Insert the air intake 12 million trachea and vacuum braking 8 million trachea. Connect the material drop detection sensor connector to the X1 interface. Use 12 million trachea. Connect the air source to the workstation air inlet. Turn on the air supply switch and adjust the filter pressure. Recommended pressure is 0.60.7 MPA. After the palletizing hardware is installed and turned on, we can start working on the software. Open Dobit Studio Pro. Click Dobot. Import the palletizing plugin provided by the distributor. Click on Plugin Installation to enter the authorization pop-up window. After copying the device serial number, visit the designated website for authorization. Enter the device serial number and the activation serial number provided by the distributor on the web page. Click to obtain the registration code. Copy the registration code or save it as a file. Then reopen Dobit Studio Pro. Paste the registration code or import file in the plugin authorization window. Click Authorize. Wait for a moment. Authorization and plugin installation will be done automatically. After completing the authorization, you can start using the palletizing function to generate the running program. Check whether the pallet uses a coordinate coefficient value. 
has been built in, in the settings coordinate system management menu. Tick on tool coordinate system, fill in the tool coordinate system values according to the actual coordinates of the tool. Click save to complete the tool coordinate system setup. Click monitor in the upper right corner on the interface, check whether the default I/O matches the actual setup. Next, create a new palletizing project. Go to the application menu, click palletizing. Click new project in the upper right corner to create it directly, or click to create a new project in more projects. After configuring the basic parameters of the project according to the actual application scenario, click to enter the configuration, configure the suction cup I.O. signal, configure the signal for the conveyor belt to feed material. Configure the signal for confirming the new pallet's position. Next, set the length, width, height, and weight parameters of the containers. Set the length, width, height, and weight parameters of the end effector. Calculate the height based on the distance from the highest point of the flange to the suction cup after vacuum adsorption. Calculate the total weight of the flange and the suction cup. Select the pallet size. Set the pickup points. According to the actual collision avoidance needs, configure transition points for the left pallet layers. Based on actual avoidance needs, configure transition points for the right pallet layers. Set the stacking pattern, set style A. Add containers. Adjust the container's unloading position. Set the placing order. Reasonably set the placing direction as needed. Adjust the placing offset as needed. If the stacking patterns of adjacent layers are different, set style B according to the stacking requirements. Set the number of layers after completing the stacking pattern settings. Set the stacking method for each layer. Motion parameter settings can be set according to actual needs. Default settings are recommended. Perform accessibility testing after setting. Once the testing passes, click Save. Finally adjust parameters. If the set suction waiting time is insufficient, it may lead to material dropping issues. If the set placing wait time is insufficient, it may lead to inaccurate placing positions. If the safe height for picking up materials is not sufficient, there may be instances of squeezing the material box. Enable vacuum detection, when the bin falls, the robot will stop running and issue a warning. After setting the palletizing height compensation and palletizing multiple layers of material boxes, if there is a significant cumulative deviation in stacking height, adjust it using the Z-axis height compensation function. At this point, the palletizing program has been successfully configured. You can return to the homepage to start running the program and view the palletizing program execution data. Thank you for watching.